please, please, can we stop with any more new apostles? I have a question and really even a bit of a challenge. We've got all these apostles. We have more apostles today than we had in the Bible. We have more apostles per Christian than we did in the Bible. We have more apostles uh, today, yet the world seems to be headed in a direction that doesn't seem like it's having the same sort of effect that the apostles have. Remember, even the enemies of the church, the enemies of the apostles stated that these apostles, these men have turned the world upside down. They've made an impact. They put a dent in society. When we look at the rise of really this extreme charismania, we've got more apostles, more prophets, more whatever you could that you can check a stick at. We've got the number of apostles increasing. Meanwhile, the degradation of society is going this way. Society is going this way. Meanwhile, we've got more apostleships going up. That doesn't even make any sense. Now, truth be told, Every last one of you who call yourselves apostle, you'll disagree with me, but it's fine. Every last one of you who call yourself apostle, you cannot be an apostle. Why? Well, first of all, you're not old enough. And I mean apostle of Christ. I don't mean apostle of Bob or apostle of Bernie or apostle of some other person because that's not in keeping with what an apostle is term in terms of the Bible. An apostle is someone, as we're looking for someone to take the place of Judas, an actual apostle that they're looking for. He says, therefore, it is necessary, verse 21 of Acts chapter 1, Therefore, they said, it is necessary, it has to be, it is necessary that of the men who have accompanied us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning with the baptism of John until the day that he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. In other words, it has to be someone that was a witness of the resurrection, not that they saw the resurrection, but after the resurrection, they saw the resurrected Christ. Obviously, because none of them saw the resurrection itself, but the resurrected Christ. And so these are people that were personally commissioned and sent out by the Lord. Cannot be someone other than that. Now, Paul, who is, as he says, an apostle chosen differently out of, out of a different time. The last, by the way, he was chosen by the Lord and he does something that Apostles today don't do. As a matter of fact, apostles won't take this challenge because the challenge is, does your apostleship match up with the same qualifications of that of the apostles of the, of the, of the early church? As a matter of fact, Paul brings up something in 2 Corinthians 12, 11. He says, as I have become foolish, you yourselves compelled me. Actually, I should have been commended by you. Why? For in no respect was I inferior to the most eminent apostles, even though I am a nobody. Here's a question. Do any of you apostles, name apostle, pick an apostle. Again, none of you are actual apostles, but if you think you are, do you, can you say what Paul just said, that you are not inferior in, in any way, shape, form, or fashion to, let's say, Peter, to John, to, to, to Paul himself, to Bartholomew, to Thaddeus? You cannot make that statement. As a matter of fact, Paul says something here, and I want you to focus on what he says and it also brings up another question for you apostles to answer. He says, the signs of a true apostle were performed among you with all perseverance by signs and wonders and miracles. Now, he says the signs, he's used this word indeed, uh, this word man semea, to apostles. Now, he says these are the true signs, the true signs uh, that were performed before you. These are the signs of an apostle. And the question is, one, do you have these, the actual signs of an apostle, you know, to validate, to verify that they are of God? Jesus has a conversation with Nicodemus and Nicodemus says, we know that you are from God. Why? Because no one can do the things you do because of these particular signs. So do you have one, these signs? Two, did you notice how I read something? You notice I actually went to the Greek. Now, I'm not saying that a person, a Christian needs to have the Greek, but how many apostles do you know understand the Hebrew and the Greek? Because you would think that they would have this sort of also this understanding. And the reason why that's important is because oftentimes we've got apostles. I don't know who is, you all tell me, who is the most sound apostle out there? Who would you say is the person that you would, that can stand toe to toe with someone going through doctrine, that could teach doctrine, not making it up because that's going to lead to another problem in just a second. But who would you say is the most biblically sound apostle? Who is the apostle that you know that everyone recognizes their power. Because remember, 
Paul is making the statement that people recognize his power. As a matter of fact, there was never a doubt as to his power. Even unbelievers recognized when the apostles did something. And he says this in regards to Titus, in regards to Timothy, in this case to Titus, but he says, speaking about holding the sound doctrine, he says, the holding fast to these faithful words, which are in accordance with the teaching, so that he will be able to both exhort in sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict. Now, he's speaking of uh, them finding and laying out elders, but if that's, a, if that's a qualification for an elder, shouldn't it be the same even more so for an apostle? How can we never see apostles actually out there, one, holding a sound doctrine, and then two, refuting those who contradict sound doctrine. We don't see any sort of strong biblical stance by those who claim to be uh, apostles. Remember, no one made an apostle become an apostle. You guys did that on your own. You claimed that title or somebody else laid their hands. First of all, is there ever an apostle in the Bible who was named an apostle by another apostle? Think about them. All the 12 that we know of and then Paul. They were not named apostles by other apostles, not apostles of Jesus Christ. Now, generically, anybody can be an apostle. I can send someone to the store and pick up some bread and cheese, and that could be my apostle. But that's not the apostle we're talking about, one with biblical credibility. And you guys act as though you have this, this power that is imbued from on high, but no one knows it. And furthermore, no one respects it. Here's the reason why. Because you all violate, you tend to violate. Matter of fact, not tend, you always do. You violate what Paul himself says not to do. He says, I have figuratively spoken or applied to myself and Apollos for your sakes. What? So that in us, you may learn not to exceed what is written. Problem is, every apostle I've ever seen does just that. So now tell me if I'm wrong. Here's the challenge. Who is the most credible apostle? There are going to be those that disagree. Let us examine who is the most credible apostle, because Paul certainly wanted to have himself examined. We could examine the other apostles, their words, their work, their worth. In other words, what have they done? What has been the lasting legacy of these apostles? They give these words that they keep giving these words. I guess the greatest legacy that they left is that these these conferences that we seem to have a conference from an apostle every other week. Uh, hosted by one apostle inviting another apostle to sell their books, to sell their shirts, to sell their CDs, to sell whatever, to sell their schools of this, uh, prophecy schools, miracle schools, healing schools. They're always asking for you to buy into something. However, we don't see that with the apostles. That's one of the biggest reasons why we think that you guys are false, that you guys are not legitimate, because you're always after the almighty dollar. And we don't see, more. most importantly, we don't see a tangible effect on the community. So if I'm wrong, I could be wrong. So tell us, who is the most eminent of apostles? Who is an apostle that we should look up to? Who is someone that we can look at and say, you know what, his doctrine is correct? Because you know what we never see in the Bible? We never see an apostle with bad doctrine. We've seen an apostle maybe step out of line, such as Peter, but we never see Peter having bad doctrine or Paul. We never see any of them espousing bad doctrine to where they have to be corrected. No, as a matter of fact, we see them always willing to defend doctrine. We don't see apostles today wanting, wanting to defend doctrine. As a matter of fact, they run from people that want them to defend their own doctrine. So please tell me, here's a challenge. Apostle, one apostle, two apostles, any apostles, apostles that you know that is a legitimate apostle that has sound doctrine, can even, and granted, I don't think that there, there probably aren't any, not that I've seen, that know the, know the languages. You would think they would, but that have actually had powers that we've seen. They've made a dent, a tangible dent in society. Uh, I don't think we have that. But if I'm wrong, please let me know so that we can then, one, follow this particular person, because if it's the apostle, we should follow that person. And then two, so we can test what they say is true, you know, like the Bereans did, Paul. So I look forward to someone who disagrees, to sending us any information, and even those who do agree, I would love to see who these apostles are. Again, we've got a large number of apostles who seem to be doing an awful lot of nothing but enriching themselves. Amen. Amen.